Welcome. This video is the first in a series of five that will introduce uh, you to complex integrals. In this first video, we're going to introduce some of the main ideas and, and the connection between what we've seen before with real integrals and what we'll see in the future with these complex integrals. To start really briefly, uh, we're going to go back to our ideas we looked at last time with line integrals of real functions of real variables. Now, as we defined there, you have a couple of associated integrals that go with a, a line integral. Uh, each is defined by taking a limit of a sum, and the sum is made up of a couple parts, where what we do is we imagine that you're, you're integrating along a curve C, C is a parameterized curve in the xy plane, and we're going to take the parameter values which run from A to B, and we're going to mark off sort of sub-intervals. We're going to split this interval AB, we're going to partition it into little sub-intervals. Now as we partition the values uh, from A to B, this will correspond to splitting up our, our curve C into little tiny um, sub-arcs. Now we're going to take a point in each sub-arc and evaluate the function at that spot, and then we're going to multiply by the length of that sub-arc, or maybe the length of the sub-arc projected onto the x or the y-axis. And in this way we get sort of a little uh, area of a rectangle. We're going to add those up over the length of the curve, and then we're going to see what happens to that sum as we let the norm of the partition, the lengths of these large sub-intervals, approach zero. So as you get more and more rectangles, basically, what does the value approach? And if the limit exists, we call that the definite integral. Now, as we talked about these uh, real integrals, we also talked about different kinds of curves you could be integrating along. We defined smooth curves, piecewise smooth curves, simple curves, closed curves, and, and so on. And then we said that when you went to evaluate a path integral, what you often did was parameterize the curve that you're integrating along. Uh, we're going to write that in terms of a parameter variable like t. And then we're going to go through and replace all of the variables inside your integral with versions that are parameterized in terms of that, that parameter variable variable. And once we do that, we get an integral with just one variable, so we'll integrate it uh, like we normally would. Now when it comes to complex integrals, we have a lot of the same elements. We're going to start with a definition that looks very much like our definition of a path integral, or, or even of just uh, a real, very, real uh, function, the integral of a real function of, of one single variable. What we're going to do is uh, imagine that we have a, uh, a parameterized curve in the complex plane. So before our curves were in the xy plane, now we're going to say that our curve C is in the z plane, where x and y are just the uh, real and imaginary parts of our uh, points. As before, we're going to, with our integral, imagine taking the parameter uh, values and breaking them up into little sub-intervals and we're going to find, define the norm of p to be the length of the uh, largest subinterval that we've broken the interval from a to b into. Now as before, we're going to take a function value at a certain spot along the curve and times by this delta term. As, uh, as before, we're going to take our little sub-arc of the curve, pick a point z, z k star, we're going to plug it in, but now the delta uh, z sub k doesn't represent necessarily a length, what that's going to do is just subtract the, the two endpoints of your sub-arc from each other. And now you'll see that this is maybe not so much uh, a representation of, of an area of a rectangle, because f of z k star could be a complex number, and this delta z sub k is not necessarily a length anymore, it's just a complex number as well. But as before, we're going to take that sum, we're going to see what that sum approaches as our norm of our partition approaches zero. And if the limit exists, we'll say the function is integrable, and we'll say that the uh, value of the definite integral is that limit. Now, as before, we're going to talk just a little bit about different types of curves you can integrate along. Uh, we have the same pictures before, and basically the same definitions. We'll say that a curve is smooth if its derivative, z prime, is continuous and never equal to zero. So you're never actually starting or stopping on this curve. You're never making any sharp turns. Uh, intuitively, the picture is that you have a continuously turning tangent line as you travel along the, the curve. So the, uh, the curves on the, uh, the two top curves here are smooth curves. If a curve is not smooth, as these bottom two aren't, but you can um, form it by pasting together 
smooth curves like you can here on the left and on the right. If you ignore sort of these, uh, these corner spots and you break this up into a two or three uh, smooth pieces, then we'll call the curve piecewise smooth. A simple curve is one that doesn't cross itself. So in other words, if you have two different times, your function, your curve does not occupy the same location at those two different times. Except possibly we do allow the, uh, the beginning and the ending points to be the same. So this uh, curve, because its ending point and its starting point are in the same place, but all of the other points are distinct, we would call it a simple curve as well. A closed curve is one where the end and the initial uh, the initial and the uh, terminal points are the same, so the two curves on the right are uh, closed curves, just as they were before. Now as we get talking about uh, complex integrals, we're going to do uh, uh, things that are related to what we did with line integrals. Parameterizations are going to be very important for us, and we're going to uh, change the integral we're given into a simpler integral that we can evaluate a little bit um, more simply. Now before we actually jump into these uh, complex integrals, which we'll do in the videos that follow, we need to talk about the parameterization a little bit, and we need to talk about directions you might be traveling along these curves. We assign to each curve a direction, also, also called an orientation, and there are a couple of rules that we'll use to decide what the direction is, what the positive direction is. First, let's say that you have a curve that is given to you as in a formula using the parameter value t, and we have a range of values that t runs over. When you're given a curve in this way, the positive direction is assumed to be the direction of the increasing parameter values. So in other words, if your initial point, capital A, corresponds to the lowest value of t, and your terminal point, capital B, corresponds to this largest value b that t takes on, the positive direction travels from that initial point to the terminal point. The opposite direction is called the negative direction. The direction in the, in the direction of the increasing parameter values is the positive direction. Now that will work whenever you're given a parameterized curve. Sometimes though you'll be given simple closed curves and you won't necessarily be given a parameterization. Now in that scenario, we do have a default understanding. The positive direction is the direction that a person would walk along that curve in order to keep his or her left over the interior of the region and the right on the exterior. So in other words, if we had this curve here, we have two directions we could walk along if we're gonna run around the, uh, the curve, but only one of those directions is uh, what we would follow if we wanted to keep our left hand over the inside. And that direction is called the positive direction for this simple closed curve. It usually corresponds to uh, counterclockwise directions. Sometimes our simple closed curve might wave around an awful lot though, and so instead of talking about counterclockwise or clockwise, what we'll do is just say, keep the interior on your left if you want to, to walk in the positive direction. All right, now uh, this is the positive direction as we, as we mentioned. If you decide to go against um, the positive direction, you're traversing the curve in the negative direction. And uh, we'll run into orientations as we walk, uh, walk through our integrals. So I'll mention the notation that's used right now. If we are integrating along a simple closed curve, C, the little circle through the integral will denote that we're just uh, we're taking an integral around a closed curve. Now with no other um, information, we will always assume when we see this symbol that we are integrating along the positive direction. And if we want to make that explicit, we can put a little arrow on that circle so that the arrow faces in the counterclockwise direction because that's the direction you would travel along the circle in the positive direction. Now if you uh, see a symbol with uh, an integral sign with the circle through it but the arrow pointing in the counterclockwise direction, that means that you are integrating your function along the negative direction of C. All right, let's move now to the next video where we'll actually talk about integrating some functions with uh, uh, complex outputs.